Joe, it's good to see you. Uh, fantastic work on The Hobbit. The, um, the difference between Lord of the Rings and, and this film is certainly, uh, it's not just in 48 frames a second, it's also in the amount of visual effects. Can you tell me what the difference is in working on this film to the Lord of the Rings films? Well, yeah, there are a number of differences. 48 frames is the most obvious one, in addition to the fact that we shot it in stereo. So a lot of the things that, you, back when we were doing The Lord of the Rings, we could kind of cheat to get away with. Uh, from a visual effects point of view, you can't cheat when there's stereo anymore or when there's 48 frames. You know, stereo means that, uh, like, forced perspective tricks that we used to use, like, you know, if you want Gandalf to look bigger than, you know, Frodo, you just made him closer to camera and Frodo farther away. That doesn't work anymore when you've got stereo because now you can actually see how far apart they are. So we have to come up with new tricks to do like dynamic force perspective with you know two sets of cameras working simultaneously at two different stages and two different scales. Um, uh, just a lot more detail in the computer graphics effects that we used. In fact, to the point where, again, because of stereo, we didn't use any miniatures on this film because um, Again, some of those tricks get given away when you when you have stereo, and so we went with digital models because we could just make them be full scale, you know, in, in the digital world. So there were a lot of things like that. The characters have much more detail than we ever knew how to do ten years ago. If you look at a character like Gollum, you know, the eyes and the skin, the the teeth, the muscles, all that detail um, is, is just much more. Uh, defined than was ever possible 10 years ago. And that carries through to all the other characters as well. So do you think that the fact that it's 48 frames a second, because when I saw it yesterday, there was, uh, the clarity is, is incredible. Mm. Um, do you think that has a, an additional pressure on you to make sure that everything's right? Or has the technology in terms of graphics advanced so much that it, that's easier to do? That was easier to do because we had already been putting the detail into you know everything that we create. Just the 48 frames is now just allowing you to see it better. Right, okay. Yeah. And how have you found audiences' reactions to the 48 frames? I think uh, the general f uh, feeling that I'm hearing from people is, is there's a, a, a sort of an initial sense of, of adjusting because they're not sure what to expect. Once they realize what it is, they enjoy it for what it is, which is a, a just a much more sort of detailed you know, feeling of, of being in the film. Do you think it's a case of immersion? Is, 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 is that what you and Peter Jackson are, are trying to do? It's just a case of using every kind of technology to immerse the viewer in the film? I exactly. It's just closer to how you see things, you know, uh, really with your eyes. And it's just trying to give you more of that experience with sure. the film. That's yeah. how I felt. I, the, yeah. the, there were times that I thought the difference between film yeah. and, uh, and this new 48 frames a second is astonishing. And I think, I hope that people buy into it. That's my hope anyway. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of uh, the motion capture, you obviously worked with Andy Serkis on, on, on the rise of Planet of the Apes and yeah. continuing to do that in, in the next Apes film. Do you think that the technology has changed uh, very much with that? Or is it mainly that people are more used to it or you're more used to seeing motion capture sort of translated to screen? Well, there's two sides to it. There's the motion capture side, which is really just about how you record the motion. And that has evolved ever since we did Gollum. In fact, when we did Gollum, we weren't even sure that it would work. But, you know, over the years, we've developed techniques for doing facial animation and facial capture, uh, like what we did with Avatar. Mm -hmm. uh, or you know, on Tintin, where you're doing this whole ensemble performance. And, and as you say, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, allowed us to move that technology onto a live action set and have the two fully integrated, which is what we continue to do with The Hobbit. So from a capture point of view, it means that the actors can, can just be immersed in the scene and not worry about if one of them is playing a digital character or not. That, that barrier you know, goes away. On the, the, the character side, the animation side, We've learned a lot more about you know what we can take from that performance and what we can use to translate to create the character that we're trying to put up on the screen. Okay, yeah. so I mean, in terms of, of the next Apes films, are, are there sort of significant advances from how you shot um, the Rise of the Planet of the Apes film? Well, as far as how we shot it, you know, they're probably not going to change too much because we're already getting pretty significant detail. Mm. Um, but I think you know where you'll see the advances, uh, as you're seeing them with Gollum, are are in the execution, in the way that we're creating the character now. Because yeah, again, the recorded data is really just part of it. But now we can, we can do just uh, such a, a better job of understanding, you know, how the human body works, and then mm. just translate that into these fantasy characters that we create, especially when they're more human-like, like a character like Gollum is. Sure, okay, yeah. so in terms of working with Peter Jackson, um, he's obviously keen to push the technological 
envelope. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, do you find that that's uh, an exciting thing to work with, the same like with, uh, with James Cameron for the Avatar films? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, we definitely enjoy trying to come up with new ways to, to make uh, you know, things appear real on the screen and to try to really understand what that means, you know, what does reality mean? Both visually, but also from a, a dynamics, you know, movement and performance perspective, because you want the whole package, you know, you want these, these scenes and these scenarios and these characters that we're creating to really feel like they were photographed. Mm, and it's the yeah. perfect illusion of reality that seems to be the key to uh, a lot of the work that you do. I think you got very, very close mm -hmm. to it on, on the apes and, and, and with The Hobbit, even though it's a fantasy setting, mm -hmm. it seemed to be a case that it was a much more realized world. So in terms of looking forward then, in the films that we haven't seen yet, but you're working mm -hmm. on at the moment, mm -hmm. what's the thing that you're most proud of in terms of uh, the next two films for The Hobbit trilogy? We really are just getting underway with it, so I couldn't really tell you too much, but I could just tell you that it, it, it is going to come down to the creative, you know, to the characters, to, to those moments that work on screen where, where all the technology is sort of is firing in a way that you no longer think about it, but you're just enjoying something that you've never seen before. Is it a case of saying to people, this is, it's as if we just photographed? Gollum as he would yeah, be on stage. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's definitely what we're going for. And that's Andy Serkis, obviously, his work, you mm -hmm. know, because he's continued to work over 10 years, I would have thought, and, and mm -hmm. you know, and maybe even longer than that, on the performance capture. Do you think that, that Hollywood will maybe buy into that a little more than it has already? Because at the moment, it seems either it's certain mm -hmm. genres and it may be tied to the genre. Do you mm -hmm. think that we'll see that more in the, in the future? I think you will see it more in the future, but it depends completely on the character. Because mm. if you've got a human character, there's very little reason to just not use an actor. Sure. It's more if you're creating some element of fantasy to that character.